Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I am back with another interesting topic in the Tosca automation playlist. So now um, I'm going to discuss a scenario uh, which uh, is asked quite often. And I have come across many questions on this particular scenario. And the question was, how can we find all the links uh, which are present on the page using Tosca, right? So uh, either it could be the number of links, uh, it could be the number of buttons, or it could be number of checkboxes, any particular element, right? So all of these um, are some common elements, like uh, the link would have uh, some common property, like the tag would be uh, the value A, which implies that it is a link. Similarly, for buttons, uh, there could be a common property value. So using this common property values, you can find all the elements which are present on that particular page, which have got these common properties, okay? You can also uh, modify some of the property like the ID value, uh, where you can find some static part of that particular ID value, which remains constant, and then other parts may be changing. But using that static part, you can find all um, the elements which matches that particular ID property value. So this is how you, you can find a solution to this particular problem. Let's pick up an example and let's uh, look at a real-time example on how we can go ahead and uh, find a solution for this, right? So here, uh, the scenario is uh, I've got the source demo website and I am in the products page where I've got a number of different products, right? And here, what I need to verify is uh, there are six products displayed on this page. Now, there are various ways of uh, going about this, right? So either uh, you can uh, go and scan each of these elements, um, and then you can verify uh, by putting a buffer count and then uh, calculating how many products are displayed on the page. But what if there are hundreds of products? OK, so these are basically links. Um, all of these titles which you see are uh, the product links. OK, and if I've got 100 products on this page, then this particular solution may be difficult, right? You you don't want to scan 100 elements uh, which are of similar nature, right? Which are particularly similar links. Now, instead of that, uh, we can opt for a much efficient and easier solution, OK? So let me show you um, how you can do that. So here, uh, let's first uh, go ahead and scan this application. So what we need to do uh, is we need to just scan one of these elements. And then we have to uh, modify the properties which can match all the other elements on this page of uh, the similar nature. In our case, uh, these are the product links, right? So we'll go here. And then uh, we will pick up one of the products. Let's pick up the first product, okay? Source Labs Backpack. So I can find this link here. I can select this. Uh, it's a unique uh, item you can see. And if I go into the technical properties, you can see the tag value is A, which will never change for a link. And then uh, if I look at the ID, it is item underscore four underscore title underscore link, right? Now, if I look at the other links, right? Uh, for example, this bike light, if I select this, you will see uh, the tag uh, property value is still A, but the ID is changing, okay? The ID is now item underscore zero underscore title underscore link, okay? But if you noticed, uh, the last part of, the, of this particular value is actually constant. Right, so the title underscore link is constant and the item underscore the number is changing, okay? So for this, it is item underscore zero. And if I look back at my previous element, then it is item underscore four. But the last part is still title underscore link, okay? So uh, we can modify this uh, ID value so that it matches all the elements uh, which have got this constant value, which is title underscore link, okay? And then Tosca will be able to find all the links which have got this particular ID, okay? So let's go ahead and first select this particular link, and then we will change it in our module attribute. Here, I'm going to name this uh, called products 
the name of the module and then I'm going to save this and close this. And then let's go to our module attribute here. I am going to call this just product, okay? Because it is a generic product link um, and it's not any specific link. So I'm changing it to a generic name. And then uh, I want to change the ID of this particular product, okay? So we want to keep the constant path here, title underscore link, but we will uh, remove this item underscore four underscore and replace it with a regular expression so that it can match all the other elements with this particular ID, okay? Also, what we want to do is uh, we want to change the cardinality here, okay? So that uh, we can use this link uh, any number of times, okay, uh, in our test case. And then uh, we can also add a configuration parameter called explicit name. And we can set it to true here so that we can uh, change the module attribute name from the test step itself, okay? So these are two additional properties. Uh, if you want to perform some action on the link or you want to change the name of the link and click on these links uh, rep repeatedly, then you need to change the cardinality and the explicit name property, okay? Now, if I go back to my module and then um, I create a test case for this. So let's pick up one folder. And here I'm going to create a test case called check products. Okay. And then uh, we are going to add our module products right here. And now uh, what we want to do is we want to get the count of these links present on the page which will give me uh, the number of products, okay? So uh, what I can do is I can use something called the result count. So this will return me the count of all of these module attributes or these links which are present in the page, okay? And then I can just uh, store it into uh, a buffer. So um, I'm going to call this B underscore products, okay? And then um, we are going to change the action mode to buffer here, right? So it will basically get the result count and then it will store it in B underscore products, right? So that's our first part. Now due to the cardinality factor, which we changed from zero to one to zero to N, now you can see repeatedly this module attribute will be added. Also, we can change the name of this uh, product right here, okay? So I can change it to anything. Um, let's remove it right now. We don't require this. Now, the next thing which uh, I want to do here is um, I want to verify whether this result count is equal to a particular number, okay? So in my case, it is six. I want to verify whether the result count is six. So I will do that. Before that, let me change the test step name here. So I will say get product count. So now let's go back to our test case and we are going to add another test step here and that is the box evaluation tool, okay? So this way we can evaluate any particular expression. Uh, we are going to evaluate whether our buffer B underscore products is equals equals six. So this is an expression. It will evaluate this expression and if it uh, is correct then it will pass, otherwise it will fail, okay? So I will say here, check number of products is six, okay? So this way uh, I can get the result count of all the uh, product links on my page, and then I can also verify um, the number of products, okay, using that result count. So let's go ahead and run this and let's verify whether we're getting the same result as expected. Uh, run this in Scratchbook and then um, the test case will pass. We can go ahead and look in our Scratchbook logs. Okay, so here uh, you can see B underscore products was set to six. And then here uh, six equals equals six was evaluated to true. Okay, so the expression was correct. So this way I could verify the number of product links 
uh, and that in turn told me how many products are being displayed on the page. Similarly, you can count uh, all the links which are present on your page. You just need to change the module attribute. If I go to the module attribute of the link and I just remove the ID property from here, then it will return me all the links present on this page. So there are a number of possible scenarios uh, in which this particular way could be used to uh, automate uh, your particular scenario. It, as I said, it could be uh, for the links. If you have got number of common checkboxes on the page and you have to check all the checkboxes, you can also do this using this way. So as I said, uh, it could be used in many different scenarios. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.